Hey, thanks again for tuning in to The Baseball Show on Nickel Press TV. It's Ralph Lifshitz. I'm Andy Singleton. We're here to help you get prepped and primed and ready for the upcoming season. Make sure to go back and check our player library. You can find any player that we've covered isolated in their own little video, or you can go back and watch the episodes in their entirety. We cover three pitchers on Tuesdays, three hitters on Wednesdays, and three minor league prospects on Thursdays all guys that we think you should be checking out and considering and we try to give you the guys not the studs and the duds but the guys that you're really scratching your head about wondering what should this guy's value mean to me for the upcoming season so hopefully this has been helpful we appreciate all the support we've been getting thank you to everybody that subscribed and has been watching and engaging please continue to do so and let's get right into it with three hitters today the first of which we're going to look at is uh, marcus Semyon, shortstop for the oakland a's my personal take on him, he gets overlooked so much of the time, and a lot has to do with the average. But really, how many shortstops are capable of hitting 27 homers? I mean, legitimately hitting 27 homers. Just to give you an idea, only five did that last year, only one in 2015, zero in 2014, and again, zero in 2013. Now, that's including Tulo in his prime and all of the baby boomers. Again, nobody's really doing it at that position. Of course, the tide may be you know, be turning and changing with all the influx of young superstars that are starting to take over at short, but it's still an elite power output. And it's something he's fully well capable of doing, at least reaching that 20 plateau again. Uh, maybe the 27 is a little bit out of reach, but we'll see. I think he's got that kind of power. He's going to be 26 this season. Uh, additionally, what else? Uh, he stole 10 bags. It's not an elite number, but only nine shortstops stole 10 or more. So he basically just made that mark so he's not going to kill you there he's going to contribute a little bit here and a little bit there uh he's played in 155 and 159 games the last two years as i mentioned he's 26 he'll be 27 in september uh and what else he has going for him his eventual replacement potentially in franklin barreto is not close to being ready so this guy doesn't really have anybody barking at his heels um uh, i'm going to turn it over to you ralph but one thing i wanted to also point out about uh, Semyon or Semyon is that while his K rate remained the same, his walk rate has increased and his BABIP was horrible uh, at 268, which of all qualifying shortstops, only Danny Espinosa and Alexa Ramirez were worse. Uh, so I think there is some room to think that Semyon has a very good floor uh, and the ceiling maybe still hasn't been scratched. Well, it's funny. Uh, Simeon's one of these guys. I can't figure out what the hell to make of him. Um, and for a lot of the reasons you mentioned, I've never been so not excited about a shortstop coming off a 27 and 10 season. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, number one, shortstop position all of a sudden had a huge influx in talent. And for some strange reason, whether it was juice balls or not, um, baseballs are flying all over the place. Uh, Didi had 20 home runs, home runs last year. Freddie Galvis, for Christ's sakes, had 20 home runs last year, last year. Uh, and then you look at something like Simeon's, um, uh, RBI total. He had, you know, 75 RBIs, which would have been, I think, first or second among shortstops in 2015. Mm -hmm. He barely cracked the top 10 last year. Uh, so it just shows that that position's a lot deeper than it has been in a long time. But there's also some troubling stuff. Because he's a guy that, though his walk rate, walk rate went up and his strikeout rate went down, um, it, it, he actually was swinging at more pitches in and out of the zone, swinging and missing at more pitches in and out of the zone at bat. Um, his hit tool actually got worse. Stopped hitting as many line drives, started hitting a lot more fly balls, popped up a lot more, uh, made a lot less opposite field contra contact, so he was pulling the ball a lot more, which is one of the reasons that his BABIP was actually as bad as it was. I know that I think it's Alex Chamberlain over on Fangraphs um, actually does um, estimated uh, BABIP, and his estimated BABIP was actually within four points of what his actual BABIP was at the end of the season. So this actually might be a guy where this is exactly the kind of hitter he is. Um, the swing and miss stuff obviously wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. This is why on surface you looked at the BABIP. You said, hey, his, his walk rate was 8 or 9, which is pretty good. You know, His strikeout rate was only 22%, which is also not all that bad, especially in this day and age. But he hit, what, 230-something? Um, so maybe he's yeah. just a 240, 250 hitter. Um, potentially, I think the speed's gone down a little bit from what it was. 
Now, with that said, there's still a lot of upside with this guy. He certainly does have 2020 sort of potential. Uh, if he was to run enough, the A's are one of the bottom five um, least run friendly teams or whatever offenses in the league. Uh, they were the only team in that bottom five that wasn't a playoff team. It's usually indicative of a bad team as they'll take more chances because they have worse guys trying to move them along. So maybe that changes this year. Maybe he runs a little bit more. Maybe he has, you know, 18 steals to 20 steals and his home runs go down to maybe, you know, 20 or so. Um, some of the other stuff didn't look all that bad. I think he you know, certainly has power, certainly has speed. Um, but I think he's kind of on the fringe of the top 10 of the position. Well, he's definitely outside of that. He's currently being drafted as the 15th shortstop all the way down in the 17th round. So wow. my take on that is, hey, even if you don't like him as your shortstop, this is maybe the best middle infielder you can get at a discount. Uh, I think he's fully capable of putting up at least 25 homers and stealing at least 10 bags again. Uh, and you know what? At that point, if you're giving me those numbers and playing 150 plus games, you can you could take the average. You know, I I, I don't think it's going to be below 238. <laughs> you hope it's not going to be below 238. So if that's the worst, it's going to be 240, but you're going to give me 25 and 10, and I'm going to get you in the 17th round to be my middle infielder and sure. backup shortstop. I don't, I don't know how you can, uh, how you can go wrong there. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value with uh, Simeon Seaman. I want to call him Seaman and just make bad jokes about it, but I'm on Rasball. What can I say? You could do that. We had, we had the whole football season to do that with a Denver quarterback. So now we have a whole summer <laughs> to do it again. All right. So I think we agree that Simeon is a, uh, is a, is a decent option. Uh, certainly not one that's going to kill you. Uh, Will Myers is somebody that I think can kill your fantasy team this year. And that's not to say I don't like him. What I love about Myers is his age. I love the positional change. I love the breakout he showed last year. What I hate is that I don't trust any of it. He has <laughs> never, never, I can't emphasize the word never enough. He has never stolen bases at any point in his career, even in the minors. And out of nowhere, he swipes 28 last season. It just makes zero sense to me. So. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, he's shown the power potential. He's even shown a high average before, only to disappear, like vanish, uh, and take like a little you know, two-year hiatus in between last year and his rookie season. The reason I say all of this is because he's currently being drafted as the number seven first baseman going in the fifth round. That means you are absolutely convinced, sold, and 100% trust him that what you saw last year – is what Will Myers really is. Now, again, like I said, it's not to say I don't like him. I like Will Myers a lot. I'm personally a fan. I think you'll find a lot of people saying that. I just don't trust him. So you tell me, should I be trusting him? He makes me a little nervous too. And uh, But when you're coming up a 28-28 season, I mean, think about it. it potentially, if not if he repeats, let's say he slides back a little bit and it's a 25-20 season, which is totally possible and not far off from what – uh, steamers projections are over for him. So they're usually relatively conservative. Here's the thing. He stole 28 bases in 34 attempts. So he was efficient. It wasn't like he had to, you know, this wasn't the Allen Iverson of stealing bases. I mean, that's, that's relatively efficient and it came out it was of nowhere. Great. It was great. But, and the funny thing is I think it's the opposite of um, sort of what we talked about with, with Simeon is his team likes to run and they're on a bad team and he's got like guys like Solarte behind him and that's his protection. Those guys aren't really going to move him along all that much, even if they're decent players, they're not great. Um, you know, maybe he'll have Renfro behind him this year and Mark Owen ahead of him. So his lineup's going to get a little bit better. So maybe some of those counting stats do get a little bit better, but I mean, he could still steal 17 to 20 bases. I mean, he has enough speed. He's shown the ability to, to, to steal bases. Now, I don't think he's going to drop down to five or six. I don't think he's, um, you know, going to be like a Machado, um, you know, a Rizzo where they're athletic and the situation just sort of bore, you know, bear itself out. Um, I think that he is going to steal. I think he's still going to get opportunities to go. It's probably going to be more like Todd Frazier was in a couple of those teams where he stole 15 or 16 bases for a few years. And then his role changed. I don't know if Myers' role is going to change all that much. Um, a lot of the other stuff I saw, I saw a player that really took a step forward in terms of the type of hitter he was. 
He had a large increase in line drive rate. He went from a 16.9% line drive rate in 2015 to a 21.4% uh, line drive rate in 2016, which is just, that's a tremendous jump. That's a very good um, trend. Another good trend is he started pulling the ball more, going from an 18.2% pull rate to 23.9% of the time. Uh, so once again, going the other way, when you start to do that, they can't shift me as much. And um, you're, you know, ultimately your baby is going to go up a little bit. Uh, swing and strike rate went down from 9.8% to 8%. Uh, stopped swinging as many pitches in and out, out of the zone, but he actually made more contact with the pitches in and out of the zone uh, that he did swing at and started hitting off-speed pitches better. Some of his be his, his highest pitch grades were against uh, sliders and curves. Um, so I think he legitimately made a step forward as a hitter. Um, do I think he'll hit 28 home runs again? It was inflated by an 18% um, home run to fly ball ratio. So that's a little bit out of whack, but you know, maybe if it slides down, normalizes a little bit, uh, regresses to like 13%, I mean, he could still hit 20 homers. Um, and the lineup's going to be better. So maybe the counting stats are better. I like sliders, I, but I price is high, though. Very high. Sliders and curves is a great name for a bar. So if anybody wants to open a bar, <laughs> name it Sliders and Curves. Send some royalties this way. And if you have nice. a bar that's already named Sliders and Curves. Send me a T-shirt. Send me a T-shirt. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, I, you know, I think a lot was made of the fact that he was back at home in San Diego. Maybe that was – you know, some of the cause for this resurgence of, you know, what was once a highly regarded prospect. The only problem I have with that is he was there in 2015 as well, and we didn't see any of this. So this is really just a one-time showing. I think his career numbers, I think one year he had 12 stolen bases, one year he had 10. Those mm. two to combined don't even total what he did last season. So I'm not buying the speed. As you mentioned, the lineup's going to change. Uh, he was efficient, but, you know, again – I, I just it's, it, to me, it, the price tag is just enormous. Somebody's going to draft them, and if this really is Will Myers, you know, and that guy gets lucky with the pick, that guy who drafted him is going to look like a genius, and everybody in the league is going to hate him. But if he doesn't pan out, you know, it, it could sink that guy's team drastically. Under over fifteen steals for Myers. Under. I'll take the over on it. Okay. Internet bet. Okay. I think I think the twenty homers, I definitely would say over. But steals, yeah. I'm going I'm going under. Um, okay, under fifteen steals. A dozen would impress me from Will Myers. I think he'll have a dozen. Okay. Well that's under. <laughs> so uh, let's move on to another Well if he gets to seventeen, he's still gonna have a dozen. Yeah. Okay, well, I think you're locking on a dozen. All right. Uh, another guy who is kind of, to me, being a little overhyped, and that's, you know, a lot of name value, name appeal. I'm talking about Wilson Contreras, catcher. Let me start by saying I'm a fan of his as well. Uh, but mm -hmm. there, are, there are at least five catchers I think I'd rather likely rather own on my team than him, and that's kind of where he's being drafted right now. I don't want to pay a seventh-round price tag on him. I believe in his average. I don't know that the power catches up, at least not yet. I think too many homers from your catcher is nice, but I think people are expecting more, and I don't know that he necessarily has that in him. Uh, you know, he doesn't do much else other than the average if you take away what you project to be his power potential. So that's really nice, but it's not worth what people are expecting of him. It's like a Yadier Molina kind of nice, who's, you know, all hail Yadier. But uh, is there upside? Of course there is. It'll be 25 in May, so absolutely. Is there risk? Not much. You know, if his floor is his ceiling, you know, then you may be overpaying is basically what it comes down to with me for Contreras. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a believer in Contreras. I drafted him all over the place uh, last year in Dynasty Leagues, traded for him. He was a, a bit of an up-and-coming prospect guy that used to be a third baseman, was converted to catcher. Um, you know, he has a good arm. I think he's still learning the position a little bit, but he played well enough behind the plate that I think the Cubs believe in him long term. And he more or less pushed Montero out of a job. Um, you know, I, his big tool to me is the on base ability. He's going to be a plus player in on base leagues, I think, uh, OBP, OBP leagues, um, you know, probably for most of his career. 
he'll tend to hit for a highish average, I think maybe 280 or so. I don't know how much I believe in the power. The power's been developed, and I always thought he was more of like a, a 12 to 15 homer guy, um, you know, not, not a 20 homer guy, which is what I think a lot of people see. I think a lot of people think this guy's going to be, you know, 300 with a, you know, 20 home runs, good counting stats, high on base percentage, where I think he's probably more like maybe, you know, you said Yadier Molina. Um, I mean, if he turns into Yadier Molina as a hitter, even um, that's that's a great ceiling for him because Yadier obviously had some great years uh, with a batting average. But I think he's more of, you know, an a, above average catcher. He'll be somebody that you own. He'll probably be consistent. He's going to have good nights, um, good counting stats because of the lineup that he gets to hit in every night. Um, so he's worth owning, especially at a, a, a position that's just tough to deal with with catchers. But personally, I would much rather own Tom Murphy. Um, if, if we know coming out of camp that Tom Murphy's uh, going to get the job in Colorado, get to see a majority of the bats, I would much rather own him. I even think somebody like Austin Hedges is kind of underneath the radar and could end up with similar value uh, to Contreras. So to me, I think Contreras is someone that's being overdrafted, a lot of it based on Cubs hype and name value. He's a very good player, and he could certainly exceed my expectations. But you know, I'm, I'm seeing a 270 hitter with 13 homers and you know maybe 60-plus RBIs. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. And let's even show Jet Bandy some love. Uh, I don't think he's in the same category as... I like Jet. Wilson Contreras. It's a great name. It is, it is a fabulous name. Uh, yeah, I, listen, Contreras, great player, but I think the the fact that he's in the Cubs is uh, is kind of pushing his stock up. Mm-hmm. There's a we lot know, of... Let's not see I, just, I, hate to, I hate to use phrases that are coined by other people, but there's a lot of helium behind Wilson Contreras. So there you go. So that's going to do it for the three hitters we wanted to mention and discuss with you guys this week. This has been the Baseball Show. I'm Andy Singleton. That's Ralph Lifshitz. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe to Nickel Press TV. And uh, engage, engage, engage. Like the videos, comment. We'll be sure to answer your questions and let us know if you agree or disagree with us. We can take it. We'll see you next time with three prospects.